All right, welcome everyone. Um, this is the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife's 2021 North of Falcon presentation for the Northeast of McNary, um, basically includes the Upper Columbia and Snake Rivers um, and includes salmon and steelhead season. So we're gonna do a quick round of introductions. I'm Ryan Lothrop, the Columbia River Fishery Manager. I'm Darren Friedel, the Region 3 Fish Program Manager. Hello, my name is Chad Jackson. I'm the Region 2 Fish Program Manager covering North Central Washington. I'm Chris Donnelly. I'm the Region 1 Fish Program Manager stationed in Spokane covering the Snake Basin. Great, thank you everyone. So we're going to move forward with this presentation and uh, we'll bring up the presentation next. So for this presentation, we've got an outline here that uh, we provided a quick um, staff introduction and, and what this presentation is about. Um, we're going to walk through what the North of Falcon and PFMC schedule and how to provide comments, um, provide some harvest management uh, jurisdiction uh, framework um, so you understand how this meeting fits within the greater scope of MNC's and setting process. Um, then I'm going to walk through some forecasts and uh, um, salmon steelhead returns. Then we'll move forward into the 2020 fishery summaries. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with uh, the actual forecasts and uh, proposed seasons for the 2021 season. So NOF or North of Falcon um, uh, and the PFMC schedule, that's Pacific Fishery Management Council schedule. Um, here's a, a list of the public meetings um, that have some have actually already occurred and some will occur later in March and in the early April of 2021. So we start off with uh, February 26th, the uh, forecast release. Um, and then we moved on to PFMC one in early March. And then there was a statewide North Falcon one meeting on March 16th. And then the following day on March 17th, we had the first North of Falcon meeting for the Columbia River um, from Bowie 10 up to Highway 395 at Pasco. And March 31st, we have the second North of Falcon meeting for Puget Sound Coast in the ocean. And then on April 1st is the second Columbia River North of Falcon meeting again for the waters of Bowie 10 up to Highway 395 at Pasco, including uh, tributaries within those sections. And then the Pacific Fishery Management Council process wraps up um, in early April um, uh, this year with uh, everything being virtual, they're not working on the weekend. So it's uh, April 6th through the 9th and then 12th through the 15th where the season will be finalized. So on the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife website, we have a North of Falcon website and the link is provided at the top of the screen you're looking at. And so you can actually go to this website and uh, provide public comment. If you scroll down, um, which I can't do in this video, but you'll see uh, different geographic areas of, to provide comment on. Additionally, if you navigate this website, you can find meeting information um, and materials provided at the, the meetings that uh, we went through on the previous slide. So moving on into the harvest management jurisdiction, basically how we fit into this uh, greater preseason planning process for fisheries, for salmon fisheries. Um, so we have the Pacific Salmon Treaty, which covers uh, the Alaskan water, Southeast Alaska, all the way down through California and just sharing agreement for harvest and returning natural fish to the spawning grounds. Then there's the Pacific Fishery Management Council process. So this is off the coast of Washington, Oregon, and California. And that's, uh, I referenced that two slides earlier, and Pacific Fishery Management Council one and two meetings are part of that. They also, the, that council process also works on uh, other species besides uh, salmon, such as uh, highly migratory species like tuna and bottom fish as well. And then in the Puget Sound and the coastal waters of Washington, there's the USV Washington um, court order, uh, or also known as Bolt decision, and then USV Oregon within the Columbia River that provides a framework for fishery planning. So I kind of walked through this already, but Pacific Salmon Treaty um, provides uh, specifics on uh, sharing agreements for fishing to prevent overfishing, um, includes the uh, US and Canada 
and includes the uh, representatives from the state and also tribal representation for Alaska, California, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. And then Pacific Fishery Management Council is one of the eight council um, across the U.S. Um, and was established by the Magnuson uh, Fishery Conservation Management Act of 1976 and includes the waters of um, three to 200 miles offshore and manages both commercial and rec and tribal fisheries, as I mentioned, many other species besides just salmon. So USV Washington, I referenced it as the Bolt decision, uh, court proceeding re reaffirming the right for Washington treaty tribes to harvest fish and steelhead along st the state of, as co-managers, covers inland and marine waters and freshwater lakes and rivers, and is directly involved in the PFMC process. <clears throat> Under the U.S. v. Oregon, this is a court proceeding issued in 1969, includes the treaty tribes of the Yakima, Nez Perce, Umatilla, and Warm Springs, and provides detailed sharing agreements uh, of salmon and steelhead between uh, the states of Idaho and Oregon um, and the treaty tribes. And there are Idaho is also, and other uh, entities are part of the U.S. v. Oregon court proceeding um, for uh, providing the uh, Con, uh, harvest management framework uh, agreements for harvest sharing and conservation and uh, hatchery uh, production goals. So uh, additionally, there are some policies that we have to consider as staff and those involved the WDFW and ODFW um, policies is set by the commissions and that provides the sharing agreements between, uh, for example, recreational and commercial or geographical sharing within our state fisheries. Additionally, there's a RCW a revised code of Washington for the wampum ban that provides uh, um, allocation of salmon to the wampum ban for ceremonial and subsistence purposes. Additionally, there's the WDFW and Colville uh, share agreement. That's a formal agreement between uh, a federal recognized tribe of Colvilles and Washington Park Fish and Wildlife to provide uh, fish and the sharing of those uh, returning fish for harvest. And additionally, we have Endangered Species Act, and this provides a uh, um, harvest or take for ESA listed salmon and steelhead, both in the juvenile and adult uh, status. Um, and WDFW uh, is required to have uh, coverage to, to prosecute fisheries uh, that has ESA impacts. So moving on into kind of the forecast realm, we have uh, this slide here. This is, you may have seen this. This is the NOAA stoplight chart. Um, it provides some uh, indicators on um, how the ocean conditions were for uh, juvenile grow, uh, grown into the adult status uh, for salmon and steelhead. Um, so red uh, equates to bad. Uh, fair or, or moderate conditions or yellow and green is good. Uh, and the numbers that you see, so at the top you see the year starting in 1998 running through 2020. And then on the far left column, you see the ecosystem indicators that specifically call out a specific indicator like a PDO um, or um, let's see, copepod um, biomass. And then at the bottom, if you wanna look at uh, Summarizing everything, it's a mean of rank, so it's just an average essentially, and then uh, color coding um, how the years compare to how, for example, 2020 compares to, say, 2019 and all the way back to 1998. So when you look at this, uh, the top set of uh, indicators are basin scales that provide uh, physical indices. Um, you have more regional based in the middle uh, tier of a uh, of the indices and um, and so when you move over to the right side, you'll see there's some physical and biological indicators. Um, the top are physical and bottom are biological. So what you'll see um, as we walk through time in 1998 was a really bad set of ocean conditions. Um, mean ranks was 19.1 or uh, basically um, they got a 23 years. It was uh, right there near the worst. Um, so then you walked into the 2010 through 2013 realm and uh, indicators, and those were turning into green. 
and that provided the very strong returns we saw in 15, 16, 17. But then the ocean condition turned on us, flipped on us, and went south uh, in a sense, um, got worse, and so caused some challenges we've had over the last three or four years. And what we're seeing in 2020, and you can see a little in 2019, some improvement in the ocean conditions, still not um, the best but uh, by any means, but it's kind of right in the middle tiers, uh, ranked uh, 11 out of 23. So kind of, you know, basically the average ocean condition, even though uh, each indice has a different effect on salmon steelhead. So here we have our forecast and returns with upriver salmonids, which includes uh, Chinook, sockeye, and steelhead above Bonneville Dam. Coho are not included in this uh, visual graph. Uh, it, it, you have Chinook in red, sockeye in yellow, and steelhead green. Um, and so Chinook make up the majority of the returns. Um, you can see each given year you have a different um, quantity of fish returning, um, and you can see the strong returns in around 2014, 15, 16, and a drop off to more recent years and a slight uptick last year. So moving forward into the upriver spring snook and snake wild returns. So this is uh, this shows just the one uh, composite of the spring snook run. Um, it's the upriver spring snook. It includes snake river, as I mentioned. The, and so you have in the red bars uh, individual returns the black line is a part of those returns and that references the esa or wild component of that stock and so in future slides um, you'll see that uh, show up in some of the presentations so again that's the esa wild component when you see the black line the dashed lines um, the top dash line is the 10-year average return and the Bottom dash line is the five year average return. And then the blue dot is the 2021 forecast. So for upriver spring Chinook and Snake River Wild uh, spring Chinook, you had 81,300 return last year. And this year's forecast is down at 75,200, which is uh, the second lowest return um, since um, ESA listing. So moving on to the upriver Columbia Spring Chinook and upper Columbia Wild Chinook returns. Again, we have the same format and layout. Um, you have the ESA component in black, which shows uh, the returns by year. The dash lines are the five and 10 year average and blue dot is the forecast. Um, so for tw the 2020 return last year, we had about a little shy of or a little shy of 13,000, so 12,800 last year, and this year's forecast is similar at 13,000. For Upper Columbia River Summer Chinook, so the fish uh, Summer Chinook destined to above Priest Rapids Dam. Uh, again, we had the same layout. The ESA component is not provided because it there is it is not ESA listed. Um, what we do have here is a, for, a return last year of around 65,500, which came in above what was forecast last year. Um, the forecast for 2021 is higher than last year's actual return at 77,600. For Columbia River sockeye, um, we have the, the ESA component on this is the Snake River, which is not shown, um, but it is a part of this entire run. Last year's sockeye return was 342,000, which was uh, which is a strong return compared to recent years, um, and much like some of the, the stronger returns um, in the early 2010s. And then for the 2021 forecast, the return is expected to be lower than last year's actual return, around 155,600 fish. Moving into Fall Chinook entering the Columbia River. So this is all Fall Chinook. This is includes Tules and Brights, as you uh, may be used to hearing um, combined. So you can see you have some good returns and then it drops off cyclical as you move through time. Again, you can see that strong return in 2014, 15, 16. Um, so last year's return um, came in actually above the forecast at uh, 577,400, 
This year's forecast is slightly higher at 580,800, and which is above the five-year average, but less than the 10-year average. So moving into the upriver bright and Snake River Wild Fall Chinook. So these are uh, Fall Chinook destined to essentially, or primarily the Hanford Reach area, as well as the Snake River. Um, you have the ESA component on the bottom and the black line. Um, and again, um, the blue dot represents the forecast. Last year's actual return was 299,300, which was above what we forecasted last year. And this year's forecast is 354,200. So you can see an increasing trend over the last few years. For Columbia River Coho, um, this uh, graph shows the ocean abundance. So this is pre-ocean fisheries. These are age three coho. And so you can see there are some really strong years through time. The most recent really strong year was 2014. Last year's uh, return of ocean abundance, Columbia River Co., which includes early and late stock, um, was 363,600, which was uh, more than two times the forecast. And the forecast for this year is uh, 1.6 million, so a little bit above the 2014 return. And for those who are curious what early stocks are, um, those are uh, coho that when they enter the ocean as smolts, they turn south and grow to be adults off the Oregon and California coast. And the late stocks turn right, basically going north and migrating uh, northern waters to grow into adult with the rest of uh, most of Washington's coastal and Puget Sound coho. So moving into steelhead, we have uh, the total uh, um, hatchery and wild A index summer steelhead forecast. The black line is the ESA component. Um, you can see last year's return was 75,392, which is um, below the five-year average. Uh, and there's several years of poor returns over that five-year average when you look at further back in time. The 2021 forecast has uh, improved slightly at 89,200, um, which puts it right at the five-year average. For the B index um, and the wild B component, um, again, uh, this slide shows the ESA component in the black line. And these are fish uh, primarily destined to the Clearwater River in Idaho. The 2021 forecast, sorry, the 2020 forecast, a return was 32,200 fish. The actually return, which was quite a bit higher than the actual forecast, which was closer to what this year's forecast is at 7,600. So we're seeing a big drop off for this year's forecast compared to last year's return. And when, especially if you look back to the five and even 10 year or longer uh, trends on these uh, wild bee and hatchery bee index steelhead. All right, so for the 2020 fishery summaries, this, this table um, shows by run and species uh, what geographical area fisheries or tributary or river reach section had for a season last year. So it includes the upriver spring chinook, the upper Columbia River summer, the sockeye, upriver summer steelhead, and upriver bright fall chinook fisheries. Um, and so this includes the areas for each of those uh, species and, and runs and the seasons of the dates that fisheries were open. To note, um, just to reference the Snake River Spring Chinook that was open May 5th through the 22nd, but on a limited days per week. Um, the rest were open consecutively within those date periods. So as I move forward into the forecast and proposed seasons, um, when you think about the forecast, I just went over, what you'll notice is there are some increases and some decreases. We have the ocean condition kind of becoming um, more tolerable for some of our um, salmonid stocks, but others uh, didn't fare so well as well. And so fall snook, summer snook, basically, and coho, you see an increase, and then steelhead um, and spring snook number two have a decrease uh, compared to recent returns. Um, but largely outside of coho, most of these runs are still below the 10-year average um, outside of 
the Coho and um, actually Upper Columbia Summer Chinook. So Upper Upriver Spring Chinook forecast for this year is 75,200, which uh, is less than half of the 10 year average. Of those, the Snake River has about 40,000 fish, Yakima 3,200, and Ice Coal uh, 200 to 500 fish. For up, Upper Columbia Summer Chinook, the forecast for this year is 77,600, which is 109% uh, of the 10 year average. Um, just for a refer point of reference, 29,000 fish is the escapement goal to the Columbia River mouth. So we're in good shape there. For upriver bright fall Chinook, this year's forecast is 354,200 fish, which is 83% of the 10-year average. The Hanford Reach um, is expecting to have about 133,100 return, of which about half are wild. And the Snake River will ha uh, makes up about 37,000 fish. For upriver summer steelhead, the total A and B index that does not include Scamania stocks. Um, this is the A and, and, and B index combined is just shy of 97,000 fish, of which the A index is 89,200 and B index is 7,600 fish. So this total A and B index combined is about half of the 10 year average. The A index is 54% of the 10 year average and the B index is uh, quite a bit lower at 30% of the 10 year average. And the B index wild, with this, which is the ESA component that will provide challenges for our fisheries, is the forecast is 1,000 wild fish, which is 21% of the 10 year average. So moving forward, we also have sockeye. Um, this year's forecast, which in, uh, include Okanagan, Wenatchee, and Snake River sockeye is 155,600. Um, below the 10 year average at 69%. The Okanagan is the largest component at 127,300 fish and Lake Wenatchee is 27,300. Regarding Columbia River sockeye quota, quotas, um, just wanna provide a little background on that. Um, fisheries targeting sockeye are, have been quite successful in recent years. Um, so we, we have harvest rates to work off of and have to um, be aware of those. But to note, we do actually have an, uh, an agreement with the Colvilles uh, to provide a sharing of sockeye. So given the forecast that we have, um, the non-treaty harvest quota is about 10,700 sockeye for run sizes between 150 to 200,000 fish, which is where this year's forecast sits at. When considering the preseason quotas by uh, our what fisheries can catch and the harvest rate and the ESA uh, limit for um, the Columbia River mouth specifically to the Highway 395 bridge for Snake River sockeye. Um, the sport fishery is projected to have about uh, 1,100 fish to work with there, so, um, which is 11% of the total uh, non-treaty share. The from Highway 395 bridge up to Priest Rapids will have about 2,500 sockeye to work with, which is 23% of the non-treaty share and then priest rapids at chief joseph dam will have about 7,000 sockeye or about 65 percent we will be adjusting these quotas up and down as the run size gets updated which usually occurs in late um, june early july so just be aware of that wfw will monitor the fishery and the harvest associated with the fishery very closely and as the season may close or be modified in season as additional information becomes available. So we do encourage you all to check the WDFW website for any fishery updates. So for fisheries below Bonneville, um, we have spring snook fisheries with improved lower river stock returns expected but decreased upriver stocks. And so the current pre-update fishery, so um, the update for reference is uh, early to mid-May. Uh, the pre-update fishery for this lower river fishery is open through April 4th and does include waters downstream of the Lewis River due to those increased in uh, lower river stock abundances. For summer Chinook, um, we are anticipating some fishing opportunity for the lower river this year as well. And for sockeye, already kind of walked through the quotas, but for uh, the lower river fishery, 
there are Snake River ESA listed sockeye that are caught, so we're limited to 1% uh, total non-treaty allowable. Um, so the preseason quota buoy 10 to Highway 395, so this is above and below Bonneville, but up to Highway 395 is about 1,100 sockeye. Again, we'll adjust up uh, in season and we'll monitor closely, so be aware of regulation changes. For fall Chinook, Lower River Hatchery tules are expected to limit uh, the, the non-treaty fisheries and in particular buoy 10. This, the fisheries as usual will be managed in season. Uh, additionally, the Oregon uh, rule or the policy on recreational Chinook fishery objectives are expected to be met. And so um, that is a good thing considering the abundance, but it does limit um, some opportunity um, in fishing beyond as uh, that we do have policy guidance on how to set fisheries there. Additionally, for planning, we are planning to reserve sufficient impacts to stay open for coho. Um, regarding coho, we do have a very large forecast and expect a, uh, a good fishery this year. And most of the harvest will occur in the Bowie 10 area and will be uh, expected to be mark selected. For upriver summer steelhead, um, we will have some challenges, particularly regarding B index, but also A index numbers are, are low as well. So expect fisheries with a limited um, harvest opportunity, if at all, um, similar to recent year regulations. And also barbless hooks will be required. So here we have the area of Bonneville Dam upstream to Highway 395 at Pasco for the main stem spring Chinook. Recreational fishery that is open March 16th through May 5th. Wind is closed and Drano is open in, in conjunction with the main stem for March 16th through May 5th, and then we'll close thereafter uh, due to concerns for broodstock. Again, for Upper Columbia River Summer Chinook, we do anticipate some fishing opportunity and harvest opportunity for the Summer Chinook. And again, for sockeye, it'd be managed based on the quotas uh, mentioned before, managed in season. For fall snook, we expect a standard fishery to occur and be managed in season. Um, and we expect some coho fishing opportunities above Bonneville Dam as well. Also upriver summer steelhead will have rolling block or limited uh, fishing opportunities as in previous years and similar to um, other areas within the Columbia main stem. And additionally, mar barbless hooks are required for waters um, from the Oregon Washington state line on downstream. Let's take a look at some of the 2021 forecasts and proposed seasons for salmon and steelhead in South Central Washington. For the most part, fisheries in the region will look similar to last year with just a few changes. We'll start with spring Chinook. For the Yakima River, we're forecasting a return of about 3,000 fish, which is just slightly higher than last year's forecast. This is the third straight year of expected low returns, so we plan to take the same precautionary approach we've done in the past couple of years and leave the fishery closed. We'll, we'll closely monitor the return in season, and if we have a more abundant return, we'll consider opening a fishery. For summer Chinook and sockeye, we're forecasting strong enough returns to the Columbia that allow for fisheries. About 77,000 summer Chinook and 155,000 sockeye salmon are expected back this year. With those forecasts, we are proposing a summer salmon fishery for Chinook and sockeye to get underway June 16th with a daily limit of six salmon up to two adults from Highway 395 to Priest Rapids Dam. From Highway 395 to Interstate 182, that's the mouth of the Yakima River. The current proposed season would be limited to June 16th to July 15th to protect sockeye and summer Chinook salmon that begin staging at the confluence in mid-July. There is a reintroduction program for sockeye and summer Chinook in the Yakima Basin, and the opportunity in this section of the Columbia is designed to help protect those fish while still allowing for some limited recreational fishing. Anglers should note that we will be managing the sockeye season in the region under a quota of 2,500 sockeye, which is based on the current forecast, and plan to monitor the catch closely. 
that quota could adjust up or down depending on the actual return. So anglers need to be aware that the fishery could close early by emergency rule. Check WDFW's website routinely for any updates during this season. Moving on to fall fisheries, the projected return of fall Chinook to the Yakima River is very low again this year. So we are proposing to leave the, sam the fall salmon fishery in the lower river closed. That's the fishery that would traditionally open in early September, but if returns are higher than expected, we'll consider opening the fishery in season. A bright spot though could be coho. Coho returns to the Columbia River are expected to be good this year and could result in an abundant return to the Yakima. Again, we'll monitor returns for potential coho fishing opportunities for the Yakima River this fall. For the Hanford Reach, the fall Chinook return is forecast to be up 40% from last year. The increase is a result of expected higher returns of hatchery Chinook to both priest rabbits and ringled hatcheries. The proposed fishery will open mid-August when summer Chinook have moved out of the area and fall Chinook are moving in. We plan to open with a daily limit of two adults, Chinook and coho. Anglers in the reach should also see opportunities for coho salmon this year. This is the first fall that we expect adult coho returns back to Ringgold Springs Hatchery. About 250,000 juvenile coho were released from the facility in early 2020, and the run looks as if it could be pretty good based on jack returns. And finally, steelhead for Ringgold, we are forecasting a very poor return this year, so we are proposing to leave the fishery closed to help the hatchery meet spawning goals. We will closely monitor the return in season, and if we do have a more abundant run, we'll consider opening a fishery. Hi, right, this is Chad Jackson, Region 2 Fish Program Manager, and I'm going to talk about the salmon fisheries upstream of Priest Rapids Dam. Starting with Spring Chinook, the Icicle River will be closed preseason. The forecast is only for about two to 500 fish, which is less than or equal to half of the broodstock need at Leavenworth National Fish Hatchery. As we see the run move through, move through the hydropower system and we start getting pit tag detections, if we realize that the run is coming in stronger and there's the ability to um, carve out some opportunity, we will do so through emergency regulation. Moving to the main stem Columbia River summer Chinook and sockeye seasons, because of the relatively robust summer Chinook forecast of almost 78,000 and some harvestable surplus in sockeye, we will be putting the seasons in the 2021-2022 uh, sport fishing rules pamphlet. Anglers are advised to check the pamphlet for complete rules details. The daily limit will be six salmon, minimum size 12 inches, with no more than two adult hatchery Chinook and no more than two sockeye as part of your daily limit of six released wild adult Chinook and coho. The use of two poles will be permitted with a valid endorsement and barb hooks will be allowed. Season structure will be July 1st through August 31st from Priest Rapids to Rock Island Dam. From Rock Island Dam to Wells Dam, the season will be July 1st through October 15th. From Wells Dam to the Brewster Bridge, it'll be July 16th through September 30th. That shortened season is to protect ESA listed spring Chinook on the front end and ESA listed steelhead on the back end. From Brewster Bridge to the Foster Creek um, area just below Chief Joseph Dam will be July 1st through October 15th. Sockeye quotas, uh, both Ryan and Darren addressed the sockeye quotas for the entire Columbia River. From Priest Rapids Dam to Chief Joseph Dam, we're going to get almost two thirds of those fish at around 7,000. That should probably last us somewhere between two to four weeks, depending upon when the run shows up, angler success, and if the thermal barrier sets up. As mentioned, uh, the quotas may go up or down in season based off of any run size updates, increases or decreases. We will be monitoring harvest very closely and the season may close suddenly by emergency rules if we hit that quota level. Anglers should be checking the WDFW website daily for updates. The other good news about the robust summer Chinook forecast is the return of tributary fisheries. Like the main stem, tributary fisheries will be in the sport fishing rules pamphlet. Please check them so you know the areas that are open and other complete rule details. 
Daily limit of six salmon, minimum size 12 inches, no more than two adult hatchery Chinook may be retained. Release wild adult Chinook, sockeye, and coho. The only exception to that is the Eniat River, which I'll address here shortly. So for the tributaries, the Wenatchee River will be open August 1st to September 30th. There'll be a night closure and there'll be selective gear rules. We're also exploring the possible use of bait in this system, but have not got a ruling yet. So check the rule books um, in case we're able to sneak that one in. For the Inat River, we're gonna, this will be the third year of a pretty liberal season for summer Chinook. It'll be a July 16th through September 30th. Daily limit six Chinook, doesn't matter if they're marked, unmarked, jacks, adults. Minimum size 12 inches, release all other salmon other than Chinook. Uh, similar, there'll be a night closure and barbed hooks will be allowed. In the Chelan River, will be open from July 16th to October 15th. Again, night closure and barbed hooks allowed. In the Okanagan River, there's a couple different season structures from the mouth to the Highway 97 bridge will be open from July 1st to October 15th. There'll be a night closure, anti-snagging rule, and two poles will be allowed with a valid endorsement. From the Highway 97 bridge to the Malat Bridge will be open from July 1st to October 15th. Night closure and anti-snagging rule. Upstream of the Malat Bridge will be open from July 1st to September 15th. Night closure and anti-snagging rule. And the same will go for the Similkameen River, July 1st through September 15th night closure and anti-snagging rule. Lake Wenatchee sockeye is gonna to be to be determined. The preseason forecast of just over 27,000 is slightly less than the 28,000 that we like to see to be able to A, open up a meaningful season and B, have minimal risk for fishing into escapement. As you see there, escapement goal is 23,000 and the 5,000 seems to provide for a pretty lengthy season. Um, we'll monitor the run, um, primarily going through Tumwater Dam, and if we are going to hit or exceed that 28,000, we will open by emergency rule. Fall Chinook seasons, like the last couple years, will also be in the Sport Fishing Rules pamphlet. Anglers should check the pamphlet for complete details. It'll be a daily limit of six salmon, minimum size 12 inches, no more than two adult Chinook may be retained. Release all other salmon other than Chinook. Two poles will be permitted with the vowel endorsement and barbed hooks will be allowed. The season will be between Priest Rapids Dam to Rock Island Dam from September 1st to October 15th. Coho seasons will be a to be determined. The really robust and in fact huge forecast for coho this year um, Seems, seems reasonable that we should see a pretty good run over Priest Rapids, but the runs over Priest Rapids can be boom or bust. So we will monitor passage over Priest Rapids and we will open up uh, if appropriate. Most likely areas would be in the icicle, maybe during the last two or three weeks of the season during uh, the summer Chinook season. So keep an eye on the website for potential emergency regulations. Steelhead seasons, they're to be determined, but um, really what we see with the forecast for the entire Columbia River system is being pretty poor at the moment. It's highly unlikely that we'll have a season opened up in the upper Columbia River. This is Chris Donnelly. I'm the Regional Fish Program Manager for Region 1 Station in Spokane, and today I'll talk to you about Snake River Basin fisheries that we anticipate for 2021 as well as wrap up with summer steelhead issues that we see for the entire Columbia Basin. For spring Chinook fisheries in the Snake River, anglers should expect something very similar to what we did last year. We have a very small number of fish available for harvest. We intend to open on Tuesdays and Fridays with our first opener coming sometime in early May. The daily limit would be six salmon, only one hatchery adult could, would be allowed to be retained. For fall Chinook, anglers should expect things similar to last year. We have a slightly increased number of fall Chinook to appear in the Snake River Basin. We will open, we estimate, August 18th under emergency rule, and we will continue to work with co-managers to establish seasons and limits under the new Snake River Fishery Management and Evaluation Plan. What that means will be that there may be or should be some harvest opportunity for both hatchery and unmarked fall Chinook in the Snake Basin. 
Season structure and length will be affected by low steelhead returns. So stay tuned as we run out those emergency rules in mid to late July so that anglers are ready for that fishery in August. For steelhead, anglers should expect closures across the basin and abbreviated seasons in many places where we traditionally fish for steelhead. Expect emergency rules to occur based on abundance as we go through the season. We will reevaluate and determine rules for the snake basin proper by September 1st based on abundance and also coordinating with the state of Idaho to ensure that we have rules consistent between the two states. For summer steelhead as a hole in the basin, anglers should expect what they saw in two, 2017, 2019, and 2020 as far as fishery lim limitations. In those years, we mostly had low B run forecasts, but also focused on low A runs in 2020. Fisheries were structured with block closures, meaning from the mouth upwards, closing as the fish progressed upstream and ensuring that we stayed off of those fish and didn't have undue impact during other fisheries and had no directed fisheries at steelhead as the block closures moved upstream. The biggest constraint for this year will be wild bee run steelhead. Anglers should expect similar structures for seasons as 2020, but also expect that as we see wild bee runs materialize, we may have to be more conservative than we are currently talking about. So what does it mean to a steelhead angler in the Columbia Basin as a whole? Anglers should expect rolling block closures similar to what we saw in 2017, 19, and 20, from the mouth of the Columbia River beginning in August and moving upstream through the fall and winter months. There may be such things as complete closures of areas like the McNary Pool, where there may not be enough fish to allow for a fishery at all during 2021. For tributary mouths, such as Drano Lake, Anglers should expect similar closures to what we've seen in the past, including night closures and no catch and release fishing for steelhead. Anglers should also expect no fishing or abbreviated seasons in portions of the Snake River and tributaries based on the abundance of wild bee steelhead as we go into the season. As Chad has mentioned earlier, there should be no expectation for summer steelhead fisheries in the upper Columbia River and tributaries above Priest Rapids Dam. Having laid all this out, where we will have fisheries, anglers should expect abbreviated limits. One fish limits, even catch and release if abundance gets low enough. We will monitor abundance or returns and abundance as we go through the summer months and have um, emergency regulations shaped to be most conservative on those fish as they come back. If you have comments and you would like to submit them to us, you can follow up with the hyperlink that is listed in this document, as well as you can call us. You see the regional phone numbers listed there or send an email to Team Spokane, Team Efreda or Team Yakima. We thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. <laughs>